I mean, come on, man. It took 36 years for the men's side to get back to this point, a point many of us thought we would never see again. And the good times lasted, what, three months? Like three bleeping months before Canadian soccer, Canadian soccer. God, what in the good name of Paul Pescalito is going on here? <laughs> Pescalito! <laughs> and before I attempt to explain what's going on here, I think it can be fixed. I think it should be fixed by any means necessary before Thursday's CONCACAF Nations League game. Thursday. Thursday. And from what I hear, they aren't even negotiating today. Oh, my God. As I explain what's going on here, I hope everyone understands that I come from a place of trying to help. I'm a fan. I'm a supporter. And my biggest concern is to make sure that the momentum gathered from the last two to three years from the men and over a decade from the woman takes Canada soccer to the next level. And that requires a partnership between the Federation and the players period. But what we are seeing right now is decades of mismanagement and near incompetence at Canada soccer come to a boiling point faster than you can say Bunbury. And while I would like to say that that mismanagement was in the past, this past month or two have not been good. From scheduling Iran to this, from trying to get into the stadium to buying a jersey, this hasn't been a good run to say the least. The CSA simply hasn't been able to match the meteoric rise of the men's national team. But to suggest that this is all on the CSA isn't telling the entire story. The background can't and shouldn't be lost, though much of it was lost in a tire fire of a press conference held yesterday in Vancouver. So here's the starting point. Players asked for 40% of the FIFA prize money for them and 40% for the woman to be shared equally. 80% in total. Initial reports from Rick Westhead, who has done a phenomenal job, again, reporting this story, said the CSA offered 10% of what is between 10 and $12 million from FIFA. That number was challenged in the media at the press conference. CSA says their offer is 30% for both the men's and the women's side, equal 60% total. At that news conference, CSA President Nick Bontis, sitting beside Acting General Secretary Earl Cochran, came out firing and didn't really stop or provide any numbers or transparency or concrete information other than saying he was staying at the same hotel as the players. He was passionate, which is good, and thought that the players' proposal just simply couldn't happen. If we as an association only had the men's team and the women's team to take care of and nothing else. No futsal, no beach, no para, no U20, no U17, no U15 on both sides. No coaching development programs, no referee development programs, no national championships. We could still not afford this proposal. It is untenable as written. My only question to that is if Canada didn't make the World Cup, did the budget not have anything earmarked for those programs? Would they not have existed? Bonus revealed that the budget was around $25 million, give or take round numbers. And I've heard that maybe $2 million of the prize money goes to getting the team to Qatar. Training, hotels, staffing, meals, etc., etc. So in the end, we're talking about what? eight to ten million dollars or about half of Fred Van Vliet's salary just to put it in context like wh what are we doing here so yeah. at the base of all this you're, you're as confused as I am yeah <laughs> all right so at the base of all this is that the players contend money should be there because Canada soccer should be making cash off of everything else problem is they made a deal in 2018 with a group called the Canadian soccer business to run their soccer business ironically enough and made a TV deal with Media Pro, who bought in at a low point and now seem to have a damn good deal. But part of that deal 
was to give Canada a legitimate soccer infrastructure that included the CPL, which is the Canadian Premier League, as well as provide a TV rights deal where one soccer was born. Now, usually I side with the players in most occasions because I think defaulting to the idea that executives are doing what's right for them is usually a fair assumption. But in using the United States players deal as a benchmark, which Canada has done, or even some European nations, uh, where I think we've come to a spot where a game actually gets canceled, comparing the United States Soccer Federation to the CSA is like comparing apples to flip-flops. <laughs> like, when it came, when this deal came together, the Canadian Soccer Association, in 2018, when they were negotiating this, when they were putting it together with Canadian soccer business, the Canadian Soccer Association was paying television networks for their time and production and then selling the advertising themselves, which is similar to deals that folks like U Sports sign. The Canadian men's side played in four games in 2018. U.S. Virgin Islands, Dominica, not the Dominican, but Dominica, St. Kitts and Nevis and New Zealand, and only one of those were at home. It was Dominica, and the producer of this show was there and estimates that he and about 8,000 of his closest friends were there with him. Somebody said to me, well, look what the French Football Federation does for its players. And I was like, that's comparing the New York Yankees to the Toledo Mud Hens, at least right now. But as I told the hardcores before a home and home with Haiti about a year ago, a new era is upon us. And yes, the CSA and this Canadian soccer business probably haven't got their investment back yet. But just be transparent now, because we all know, including the players, that this bet on Canadian soccer is about to cash in, and cash in big two straight World Cups, and the hosting of a World Cup makes squabbling over eight to 10 million look foolish and selfish. It's time for everyone to come together for the betterment of the game, and you cannot do that without trust. The CSA needs to move as quickly as this team has, because nobody that loves the game in this country can afford to lose the momentum of this moment. Not the men, not the women, not the CSA, not the CSB. Get this done quick. Because, man, it felt good to have nice things for Canadian soccer for once. And you don't want to be responsible for taking that away. And that's kind of where we stand.